Greetings, everyone. Welcome to the third Thursday call of the Co-Creators Convergence. I'm Noelle Marshall, and I'm here at my family home in Maryland. And with me is... Hi, everybody. This is Bob Warner. And uh, together we call ourselves Light Partners. And uh, we're real excited about our call tonight. Uh, welcome uh, some good friends of ours uh, from our recent travels that we got to meet Anna at Sunrise Ranch and Mindahi Batista, and we'll do a little bit more introduction of them later as they discuss the, the message of the Kogi. And Anna has a wonderful presentation, and, and Mindahi is also going to address us and bring some wisdom forward. So uh, before we start, I want people to just want to say today is November 15th, 2018. And Bob, would you tell everybody a little bit about the Co-Creators Convergence? That's a little bit hard to believe that it's November 15th, um, since there's no six inches of snow on the ground in Washington, D.C. Um, we are so glad everyone is with us this evening. This is going to be a very, very special evening. We're very excited to hear all about the indigenous uh, caretakers visit to the United States and what it has meant to us and to all of us. And thank you, Anna for, and Mandahi for being here this evening. The Co-Creators Convergence is a heart resonance community of uniquely gifted souls, dedicated to embodying and amplifying our collective consciousness and thereby co-creating a world that works for everyone. We do this with great love, with compassion and joy, and we honor all realms of creation to accelerate the awakening of humanity. We invite everybody on this call or that listens to this recording later to be a part of our community. And there's four ways that you can be a part of the community. One is by being on these third Thursday every month calls. To join in circle, we have special guests sometimes, like we do this evening, and uh, we always pour it all and have them available on the second way to connect with us, which is the cocreatorsconvergence.com website. We actually have four and a half years worth of past calls uh, available of all the folks that have connected in this way. We have third, a very active Facebook page, and we invite you to join that if you're not already a part of the Facebook, Co-Creators Convergence Facebook presence, and uh, find support there as well as uh, always continuing heart resonance. And lastly, we gather once a year in circle for the first six years and the next two years at least at Sunrise Ranch in beautiful Loveland, Colorado. The next Co-Creators Convergence will be June 12 through 16 of next year and we invite you to be a part of that circle. We will have registration information available by the first of the year, maybe even by the first of December. So please join us there. Noel? Oh, that's a hot ticket. So you better <laughs> sign up for that. Bob, why don't you tell us what the theme is for this year at the Co-Creators Convergence? The theme is the voice of co-creation. And so we look forward. It's going to, we're going to spend our time focusing on, as we did last year or earlier this year, I should say, uh, on the heart chakra with heartful co-creation. This coming year is going to be about speaking our truth with compassion. Fabulous. Yeah. Looking forward to that. So thank you everyone who's joined us so far. I know that some people have to get off and on, but uh, without any further delay, I'm gonna ask Nicole uh, if she would do a little centering for us and then I will introduce our guests. So Nicole, I'm gonna put ourselves on mute. If you would mute us and go ahead and unmute yourself. Thank you. Hi everybody. Um, tonight I'm going to, I'm trying to mute you and it's not working out. Um, if you could meet yourself, okay, that would be great. So tonight I'm going to play Aurora for us, and we can breathe in the resonance. And the goal for tonight is with um, everything that's been going on election-wise and um, how we're feeling um, separated, I thought we would kind of lean back into connection and really kind of breathe that in. So hopefully you'll be able to hear her. She's quite beautiful sounding, and we will uh, begin the meditation. <laughs> So on our in-breath, let's go back into our hearts, back into connection, 
back into connection with Mother Earth. With our out breath, let's release the idea of them. Because there is no them, there is only us. Let's hear the call from Mother Earth and all the plant and animal beings who are calling us back in unity to live in harmony and in balance with Gaia and all of our love brother sisters around us. I ask us to keep breathing into our hearts and hearing the call of our brothers and sisters. Awaken asleep. Let's make a choice today to get back into connection, to get back into unity, to realize there was never a them, there has always only been us. There is no east versus west. There is no right versus left. There is no wrong versus good. Everything is in divine and perfect order and everything is in divine creation and beautiful plan. Let's breathe that in. Let's breathe in the choice for new beginnings, new connections, new unions, new ideas, stronger listening, deeper communication, and deeper fellowship with everyone. And with our out breath, let's release any idea of who is wrong and who is right. And just get back into, just into our heart space, into that pure place of grace and love. Having faith and trust that the divine plan has always been in our favor and everything is going to work out to support and connect us always. Let's breathe that in. Okay. Let's join back in circle. Yes, thank you. The animals wanted to join us. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell a little bit, everyone, about our guest tonight. I there we go. I'm going to start this again. Um, Anna Negron Navarro has a master's degree in anthropology and a film and production degree. And she's an award-winning videographer. And I know some of our CCCers have seen the, video, the videos that she did for a Planetary Mission for Barbara Marks Hubbard. And uh, she is currently the video producer uh, at the, uh, and department manager at Sunrise Ranch, where we live during the summer. And I would say that Anna says that her calling is to show the divine beauty of life to others, to awaken in them the awareness of this truth within themselves, to teach others about the fullness of life, and to inspire them to embrace the role of authenticity for the betterment of the world. So I just um, can 
that she is just a beautiful light. Uh, she also had her delight and passion to create films, books, and courses that spread Christ's teaching on the fullness of life. So Anna will, was uh, uh, recently with the Kogi and Otomi, um, as well as Lakota elders that visited Sunrise Ranch and then went to Crestone and then ended up at the um, Global Climate Summit in San Francisco. So, uh, and she was accompanied by one of the guests uh, on this trip was Mindahi Crescencio Bastita Munoz, if I got that right, Mendahi. He is a director uh, of that tour for the original caretakers. And Mendahi is a director of, um, he serves as a general coordinator of the Otomi um, Hanu Regional Council of Mexico, a caretaker of the philosophy and traditions of the Otomi people, and has been an Otomi ritual cemetery officer since 1968. He was born in Toltepec, Mexico. He holds a doctorate of rural development from the Universidad Autonoma Metropolitana and is president of the Mexico Council of Sustainable Development, another one of our interest areas. So we are so thankful that uh, uh, Mendahi and Anna have agreed to co-create with us this evening. And um, uh, yes, this is going to be recorded, as Bob said. Uh, and Anna, we are in an area where we don't have uh, internet coverage or on our phone. So I am going to put us on mute. And um, I'm going to turn it over to you now, my dear friend, because I know you have some slides and some other things. And I know that you, Mendahi, have ideas. Um, how you want to present this. So I'm just going to bow out now. Thank you everyone for coming. And we look, we're looking forward to the next uh, hour, 90 minutes together, whatever we, whatever we decide. Thank you. Okay. Well, um, uh, thank you for that introduction. And um, uh, I hope that you can hear, hear me well. Um, Yes, my name is uh, Anna, and um, I'm going to be showing you some uh, slides of um, who are the Kogi and the Otomi, and um, and then Mindahi is going to come and afterwards and tell you about the message that um, these two groups have. Um, so I'm going to start my my presentation. Uh, by sharing my screen. Oh, wait. Share screen. And um, let's go. This is not it. Okay. So, um, The Kogi and Otomi, who are they and what is their message? Here uh, is a photo of um, the actual, we were filming and interviewing um, Agustin Tai um, while we were in Crestone. And that's how we, you know, got to, to meet and um, get, you know, all the information that they were giving to us. So, I'm going to skip this, uh, <laughs> this slide because Noel already introduced me and um, there's no need for me to do that. But I did want to tell you that uh, why I'm connected with the Kogi and Otomis. Um, it's not just that I'm an anthropologist or a filmmaker. Um, I do believe that we have spiritual synchronicity in our lives and that, that there's a plan that somehow get us together and give us certain missions or, or a destiny in common. And in particularly with, with the Kogi, um, I was approached by, by a friend of mine a year ago, and she told me that she had gotten this paper that she had um, printed and that she didn't know why she had kept it and she didn't know why she had um, 
uh, put it in her luggage when he came to when she came to Sunrise Ranch. And when she saw me, she knew that it was for me. And this paper was um, an article about the Kogi, and I didn't know anything about the Kogi at that time. But I, like her, I didn't know why. I took the paper and after reading it and finding that it, you know, the the the, the, the profound wisdom and beauty that they carry, I left it in my room until Noel asked me if I will accompany um, the the Kogi, the Otomi, and Lakota in their sacred journey in Crestone. And when I heard that, you know, I was like, oh my God, yes, of course I want to accompany uh, the Kogi, the Otomi, and Lakota in their sacred journey. And um, it's just a series of synchronicities that you are not looking for, that you're not aware of, that come into your life. So. I just wanted to um, to bring a little bit about that because in this period of time, we are all being um, brought together in these very spiritual synchronicities that we need to, need to pay attention and say yes. So then, um, yeah, uh, after being in Crestone, I have to tell you that it was an immediate um, like like being with family being um connected to uh an ancestral bond and something something was born there that i i really had not prepared for but <clears throat> here we are and um I'm going to tell you uh, a little bit about what I have known and what I've uh, learned about the Kogi and the Otomi, uh, who they are. They are traditional indigenous people of Latin America. The Kogi in specifically are from the northern part of Colombia over here, um, from the Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta. And their ancestors had been there for centuries. They also refer to the Sierra Nevada as the heart of the world. The Otomis are here in Mexico, or uh, what we call Mesoamerica, but specifically in Mexico. And they live today uh, in the states of Mexico, Hidalgo, Querétaro, Guanajuato, Michoacán, Pueblo, and Veracruz. Puebla, I'm sorry. We, which are mainly in this region. Um, the Otomis are considered the original people of the highlands of Mexico. And archaeological findings indicate that they settled in the highlands near the year of 8000 uh, AC. So who are the Kogi? Um, here we have, <clears throat> like I said, you know, in the top of uh, Colombia, there's this little um, triangle, which is called La Montaña Sagrada, uh, in Sierra Nevada, and, and the Kogi call it the heart of the world. So that's where the Kogi live. This is their territory. And this is Santa Marta over here. So that's part of the um, uh, Santa Marta, um, Sierra Nevada um, mountain. It's, some people think that it's the Andes, but actually the Andes are a little bit farther and don't touch with the pyramid of La Montaña Sagrada. <clears throat> so, a little bit about the culture of the Kogi. They dwell in, um, in the mountain and they fabricate these beautiful um, houses called Maloca, which are built by Bareheque, which is an, a kind of adobe. And they also use wood and struck uh, straw. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, they also, they um, have a pattern of, um, of agriculture that they um, use the mountains and in different thermal floors so that they can have a diversity of products. And they also uh, have um, livestock. And Usually, each family has two or more plots in these um, thermal floors so that they, like I said, have diversity of products. And once a week, they move to the village where they build a circular hut 
and they call it Casa Maria, and that's where they do well their um, uh, ceremonies together. So, whoops, sorry about this, it's moving very fast. <laughs> Uh, I have here a slide which tells a little bit more about Kog uh, the Kogi culture and traditions, and it's divided in uh, female and male. Like the women pick up the cotton to make all their uh, fibers, and they weave the bags called mochilas, which are the um, these bags that they use over here, and they also weave their necklace. While the men they weave the clothes with the cotton that the woman provide, and the, traditionally they shoe coca leaves to connect with Mother Earth in the poporo, which they carried in their little uh, mochilas or a hand, and uh, they weave also the hats for the mom. And this over here is the poporo, and um, that's also very ceremonial and connected to their spirituality. So about the Kogi spirituality, um, the main event, if you will, is the law of origin. And what it says is that the Kogis, um, uh, the Kogi says that without thought, nothing could exist. And um, the, uh, I'm gonna read that this is the structure and the basis of modern quantum physics, where an atom has gone from being a tangible particle to being rather a possibility that manifests itself physically once we choose or make a decision. In a few words, we create matter and reality with thought. So that's the uh, law of origin of the Kogi, and um, it's basically what um, quantum physics uh, scientists are explaining that happens in reality when we look at, um, at possibility, if you will. Um, the other part that it's important about, well, everything is, is, is important in the spirituality of the Kogi, but there's legend that, um, that they tell that the little brother was expelled from the heart of the world, from Santa Magda's um, mountain, when they didn't respect the great mother. Um, so, they refer to the Westerner as the little brother. And they came from the mountains to deliver their message to the little brother when they saw um, how in the meditations, uh, how the, the earth is suffering. So the highest authority and character in the system of the Kogi is the Mamo. And here's the Mamo. And uh, he is like the intermediary between the heavenly forces and men. And um, he actually has been trained since he's uh, a little kid and placed in almost darkness for most of his uh, until he's 18, where he gets out after being um, trained as a mammal by other mammals. So he doesn't touch the world for years, only in this uh, world called Aluna, which is the world of thought and possibility. And uh, his mother come and feed him, and uh, other mamas comes and, and like I said, and, and, and teach him all the wisdom and how to connect with this world of thought and possibility called Aluna. So, through uh, very deep meditations and fasts of several days and offerings, the mammoths help create the balance and harmony necessary for the world. They communicate with the plants, they communicate with the animals, and with other living beings that we cannot see. And they do that to receive advice on how to take care of the planet. And they also receive um, news of changes that are going on in the world. And that's how they can do prophecy. Um, the mammo for the mammals, one thing that is super important in their spirituality is to give back. There's uh, uh, reciprocity. Um, if we take something from the air, we need to give back. And that's the offering and that balances. And we never take more than 
what we can, you know, um, reciprocate to the earth. So they bless the seeds, they bless the animals, and everything is in that balance. Um, so, uh, going to my next. Now I'm going to talk about the Otomi. Um, the Otomi, as I said before, they live in uh, central Mexico. I mean, that he can correct me if I <laughs> said something that is not if out of place. But, but basically, it's this area uh, where Querétaro um, and um, el, el Estado de México, um, Veracruz, Hidalgo, Guanajuato, Michoacán, Puebla are. So here it's a little bit about the languages and how they're dispersed in central, in the highlands of Mexico. Talking about a little bit about the culture of the Otomi, they are master craftsmen. They are um, amazing um, maestros in the crafts of the dolls, bags, clothing, pottery, and many other other things. Um, but they're super well known by the beautiful embroideries that they do. Actually, some uh, artists that are not even Mexican are looking at these patterns and doing things in their own art, inspired by the Otomi art. Like you can see, it has symmetry and color that it's, I mean, it's beyond beautiful. And um, yeah, the, the, the dolls are super well known and all kinds of uh, bags and embroideries that they do. But like I said, this is only some of the uh, crafts that they do. Show you with that. Okay. And about the mode of production or the way that they are, they live, <clears throat> traditionally Otomis were farmer and some of them are still are. Uh, in general, um, they cultivate the corn, the bean, the wheat, oats, pep uh, pepper, tomato, and other produce. And um, they also raise all kinds of small animals like chickens and pigs and also cattle. And because of the economy has changed so much in Mexico and I mean, um, the Otomi have been uh, oppressed in many ways by the government. Uh, many Otomi farmers travel to complement their economy to the cities when the agricultural circle is off. So um, one of the things that the Otomi also um, cultivate is the maguey, which is a succulent plant that is all over here in the, oops, sorry. <laughs> over here and um, with that you do the agave syrup that is sell here in the United States um, you know like a syrup but they do the tequila and also the pulque and that the pulque is the the most traditional otomi um, drink okay and And this now talking about the spirituality of the Otomi, I wanted to bring an example, which is a Temescal, which is uh, an ancient ethnic practice. Um, it's a steam room or a sweat lodge. And people take uh, steam baths for purification, healing and refreshing. And traditionally it's made of mud and other basic autochthonous materials that are non-toxic. Um, it says that hydro, therapy, thermotherapy, phytotherapy, which is in the medical herbalism, and psychotherapy are combined in the uh, Temascal to, in a ritual to prevent and cure diseases and um, uh, also to have, when the Otomi elders also do the Temascal, they also have their uh, fastings and their rituals to get um, messages and visualize things, steps, what they need to do uh, further on. And I'm talking more about um, the spiritual leaders. 
And people also go to try to find their own destiny. Uh, I brought this also um, um, slide with this picture talking about spirituality because I found it like really um, basic and, and, and profound that something like a tortilla, which is an everyday, uh, everyday food that, that, that in Mexico would be consumed like daily, can be imparted with ceremony and with um, sacred meaning. And there's specifically these ceremonial tortillas uh, they, when, when they're doing them, and you can see that there's symbology, and this, those are things that come from their family tradition. They start blessing the comal, uh, where they're going to be cooking the tortillas. And of course, they have already blessed the seed when they were uh, planted, and the corn when it was harvested. And there's a continuous blessing um, to make something that it's an everyday, uh, basic item. So I, I love this because it's, it's, it shows the, the link of the spirituality of the Otomi with nature and everything in life. So the Otomi says everything in nature has spirit and I guess Mindahi can talk about the medicine of everything. And um, each, uh, it says each element has a religious meaning uh, even the creaking of the wood where the tortillas are prepared, which are the murmurs of the souls that observe how they are cooked. So we're talking here about family. So um, there's um, broad knowledge of the Otomi, like medicine, philosophy, astronomy, um, has been taken abroad and sometimes even, you know, um, claimed as discoveries from other people. So here we are in the message, and um, I would like to pass it then to Mindahi because he's here and he kind of talked about it. I just can introduce that, um, you know, we always have the deepest uh, wisdom of the universe, usually expressed in very simple ways by humble and traditional mouths, like I said, like expressed by not the rich and powerful, but by... Um, humble and traditional people. And uh, this has been always, you know, sometimes oppressed and, uh, but that's how it's has been coming. So I'm gonna take this out and, um, whoops, how do I, wait a minute. How do I get back to I don't know how to get back to you. I think you can just do an escape. Yeah, you just go into share screen and exit out. Okay. That's what I can see. The share screen. I can share my screen for a second and I can um, exit you out. And then I can hold on a second, stop share, and we're back. Okay. So, did I stop sharing? Yes. Okay. We're back. Excellent. Okay, so I will pass it on to Indahi now. Thank you, thank you. That was really very informative. Mindahi, welcome to the call. And um, I also, I don't think I mentioned that Mindahi is also executive director of the Center for Earth Ethics and works with uh, very closely with uh, Karena Gore. And uh, that name should sound very familiar to you as uh, sometimes he calls her his boss, but I don't know about that. So Mindahi, uh, you could please um, um, bring us your wisdom and tell us a little bit about uh, your background as well as the as well as the 
the experience that you had coming with the group and why these these groups came together and, and worked together on what your mission was. Um, and so I turn it over to you. So thank you, Anna. It was very informative. How are you, brothers and sisters? It's my pleasure to be with you this beautiful night. And uh, I've been very happy to have been in the Sunrise Ranch and that we were welcome in our, in our visit for the second visit of the first phase regarding the healing and balancing Mother Earth. And it was such a beautiful night that we spent in the Sunrise Place. And, uh, Thank you, Anna, for this uh, wonderful presentation about the Kogi and the Otomi Toltec peoples. Uh, first of all, I also like to, to thank uh, Bob and, uh, and also all of you that uh, you are in this, attending this conference. Um, my name is Mindahi Bastida. And I come from the central Mexico, uh, of the, from the Valley of the Moon, uh, Zambata. Nowadays, it's, it's named uh, Toluca Valley. And it's very close to Mexico City Valley. And it's an upper valley that uh, goes from Mexico City to the west, just an uh, hour and a half. As uh, Anna mentioned, uh, the Otomi peoples is a very ancient peoples. Uh, it was one of the most uh, ancestral uh, peoples in central Mexico before the Aztec, before uh, uh, the Mayan, before the, the other great civilizations, the Otomi uh, were established in many, many thousand years ago. And it, it gave birth to many other cultures like the, together with the Olmec, uh, Chicalancas and other peoples. Uh, we are cousins with uh, Mayan peoples. We have the same root, uh, as we have the same uh, very alike uh, wisdom and traditions, just that we live in different areas. The Mayan lives in the in, in south east of Mexico and all, all over to, towards, the, uh, towards Nicaragua, but especially in Guatemala, uh, Belize, mostly in Mexico and uh, El Salvador. And just let me tell you that uh, ever since uh, I remember, I was in, uh, in this journey as a little one and my i come from the lineage of the from my mother's side from the which means the the birth the birth family and from my uh, my father's side from my grandma and my grandpa i come from the family of the dancers the uh, fire dancers so my mother is from uh, another state where there is also Otomi in the state of Hidalgo, north of Mexico City, in the very beautiful highlands also. So the Otomi people, we live in the tropical forest, we live in the desert, we live in the, by the wetlands. So it's a very huge uh, territory. And um, now, uh, uh, here in, in New York, I'm working with the Center for Earth Ethics. I'm the director of the original caretakers uh, program. Uh, and I am not the executive director of the center. The executive direct, director of the center is Karina Gore. And she's my colleague, more, more than my boss. She, she's a beautiful person. And uh, 
going back to the to the work that we have been doing with the Kogi, it was in 1913 when I was invited to uh, a gathering in Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta. A wonderful, wonderful gathering where more than 100 spiritual leaders came together. I was in charge of taking some uh, elders, uh, some Otomi Toltec elders, and also uh, Don Martin, who is a uh, Wirrarica Maracame, it, it means the uh, highest level of uh, priest among the Wirrarica, which uh, also are, are known as Wicholes. The Wichol people are the, are the masters of the, or let's say, they are together with the Hikuri, which is also known as Peyote. They are the, the peoples of the Peyote. So one of the, the Maracame also was uh, participating in this gathering in Sierra Nevada, Santa Marta, and I was in charge of uh, taking these elders together and, uh, and we met many, many, many uh, spiritual leaders from the Amazon, uh, from Peru, from Brazil, from the Amazon of Ecuador, and uh, many others from the Andes, uh, like the Keros. They are very high spiritual leaders in the, around the highlands in, in the Andes of uh, Peru. And uh, also came other Nakota, Lakota people, uh, spiritual leaders from the United States, and uh, and there were also a few from uh, other places around the world. I remember there was this uh, chairman from uh, Siberia and uh, from the Balkai Balkai place, and uh, we were there for a week. Uh, we were we went to one of the beautiful communities in the highlands of uh, Sierra Nevada. Sierra Nevada is a huge, huge mountain, a sacred mountain in Colombia, which is uh, more or less the size of, uh, let's say, uh, Holland. Just the that huge mountain is the size of a country in Europe. So it's huge and it's the, and you can find four peoples in Sierra Nevada, Santa Marta. One of them is the, you know, the most known uh, nowadays is the Kogi, but also there is a Arhuaco peoples, Canquamo peoples, and Wiwa peoples. So they were the, the, the host, especially the, the Wiwa. We were in their territory, but uh, there were also Kogi over there. Uh, when we arrived there, uh, we were blessed by, by the spiritual leaders. And we were able to, like in the ancestral time, just to eat very natural food. We were going to have a spiritual consultations because it was a time, and it's uh, written in, in our, our prophecies, about the time to come together, around the time to come the eagle and the condor together. When we say the eagle and the condor, we say this, um, the peoples, we say the territories, we say the hearts, the heart of the sky and the heart of the earth are coming together in order to bring, to push, to pull, to wait for the new dawn, for the Pachacuti and for the, for the new era. We knew that in, uh, in May 3rd, 2013, according to our ancestral calendar, it was a time for us uh, to end the big, the big long account 
uh, not just around the Mayan uh, calendar, but also the Ottoman Toltec calendar, the Aztec calendar also. Uh, we share together uh, the, the same basis. And um, more than 5,000 years, almost 5,200 5, years were uh, about accomplished that year. So we were doing this gathering to honor for this ending of this uh, time. So then we know that there, there is 13 years for this uh, process, 13 years for uh, clean cleansing, 13 years for to be prepared for the new long account, for the new era, for the new dawn. So we are in those in those years now, and we are witnessing with together with our mother, the mother earth. So many things that are happening, not just in the sky, not just on, on earth, but in, in the heart of the Mother Earth. And, uh, and we know that uh, many, many people around the world have forgotten how to, to give thanks for the life. They have forgotten how to, to come together and they, they have forgotten how to pay back to Mother Earth for the air we breathe, for the food we eat, for the sun rays that we are blessed. So we have this knowledge that many people around the world have forgotten, and especially because of colonization and imposition of other religions among peoples, over people. There is a prophecy that we also share with the Hopi. And we have those stones in our, in our territories as well, and in the Hopi lands as well. There was a time when uh, human beings, we were working together with the mother. We were working together with all beings, with animals, with the plants. We were respecting the sacred rocks. We were respecting the entities and deities of the mountain. We were respecting the entities of the creeks, of the rivers. We knew about the rivers in the sky. We, we knew about the rivers in the, in the earth, in the mother earth. And every single space on top of the mountain was sacred. And it was, we were the ones who, especially human beings, who, who was, uh, were sent here to keep balance, to, to bring respect to, to, to life. And, and we were put here for the care of life. So it was around uh, more than 7,000 years ago that we lost, many cultures lost, this working together with, with the Mother Earth. And some culture began to live from the Earth. And many others, we are still struggling and living with Mother Earth. So that's a big difference, living with Mother Earth and living from Mother Earth. So we knew about that, and th that was the, the time to come together. And that was not the only gathering that we have had. Previous gatherings had happened, especially in this continent, but also in, in other continents. Because we know that uh, also the phoenix and the, and the dragon uh, that we also have, because it, it crosses, in this case, not just to the north to the south, but east to the west. We also have the water serpent, which is a dragon, and is connected with, with, a, with Asia, and is connected with Africa, and is connected with Europe, and so on and so forth. 
So this is the time. When we were there for this week, we were having these beautiful gatherings, beautiful teachings from the elders. And we had the chance to go for the spiritual consultations while, while we were there. And uh, we had this strong, strong um, ritual where we received these instructions. And it's based in the four pillars. And uh, in one way or in another, everybody who, were, uh, who was there, we were instructed to work for those four pillars. The, the first one is about to form a council of elders in three steps. One with seven elders, the basic council of elders. The second one with the 13 elders, which is, is, the, is very important because we know that there are 13 um, levels of consciousness while we are here on this uh, on uh, with mother earth there are 13 and also remember there are 13 moons that uh, go around uh, so we can accomplish one cycle so this is very important very profound i'm just telling you just the, the surface, what we have been uh, instructed. And the third council is composed by 52 uh, elders, but it has to be composed by elders from around the world. These elders are going to, to be the ones who are going to guide not just native peoples, but human humanity, as the Kogi say, the younger uh, younger brother has not taken care enough about uh, the care of life. We need to go back to the origin original instructions, uh, as Anna mentioned as well, the original law, and the original law also talks about the four directions, the seven directions because it's all about to take care about the four element, elements that give us life. And those elements are reflected, reflected in all beings around, the, around this, uh, what we call nature. But Mother Earth is a being, it's a big being and every, Every being around uh, Mother Earth got spirit, got this energy. But there are some other uh, special spirits that are called entities. And for every fruit, for every plant, for every rock, for every mountain, we know that uh, they have spirits. So the pantheon of um, uh, for example, the Otomi peoples is very complex. Uh, while I was in the Sierra, Sierra Norte de Puebla, in one of the states that we still exist as Otomi peoples, I was there studying for, uh, for more, than, more than a year. And I, I learned uh, how to, to make uh, a matte paper where the codexes used to be drawn. And uh, just to let you know that uh, over there, there are uh, some uh, sacred stones that tell us uh, about the importance of human beings on this, on this uh, planet, why we are here. So that's the, the, first, the first pillar 
the first pillar is all about acknowledgement of the uh, the spirituality and the authority the authority of uh, indigenous peoples that uh, we still have regarding this ancestral knowledge so uh, it it is needed that humanity and knowledge the spiritual authority of indigenous peoples regarding this deep relationship with nature. So that's pillar number one. Pillar number two is all about uh, sacred sites. And we have two special uh, actions. One is to take care, do ceremony in special places like uh, mountains, creeks, uh, where we know that those are sacred places, and we need to protect them. And we need to reactivate some of the most sacred places because there is confusion, there is uh, so, so much um, imbalance and because of uh, fracking because of uh, oil companies because of all of this uh, you know urban sprawl all of this that are threatening uh, sacred sites also threatening life also threatening threatening the lives of people who care take care of those sacred places that are important because they, uh, especially some sacred places are like uh, very important points and uh, not just for for us but for the, for this being for mother earth to be alive so we need to to reactivate those places to take care to to do payments and offerings so that's the first, the, the first one. And the second one is to go to the most affected places around the, around the, the earth and heal. And through that healing, we, we bring balance. So this is a very long, long, long um, work that we are taking. But we are, uh, well, I'm, t I'm telling just that all of this we received for the first time in uh, Sierra Nevada, Santa Marta. When we went back to, the, to our territory, because we, we knew that we had to take care about the sacred sites. But where? Where are we going to go? We were just said, oh, go to Fukushima. Go to Mount Fuji. And that was it. And it also appeared uh, another one. Uh, there is a lake in north of uh, Russia. It was also mentioned. But the first one was the Fukushima. Go over there. So we went back, uh, the Otomi and the Wurradika, and we went back and we were doing uh, the spiritual consultation in the Temascal. We call Pato, the sweat lodge. We were asking, and we were said that we had to go not just to Fukushima and Mount Fuji, but also to other places because there is an energy related to to this place that provoked through the tsunami provoked the disruption of the, this nuclear plant and and you you know that there, there is a radioactivity and which is uh, affecting not just uh, the sea or the or the earth but also affecting the sky so we were said that we had to go 
in the same parallel, the same parallel to Mount Etna and to Four Corners. So we went for the first time to in 2014 uh, to Japan. We didn't have funds, we didn't have enough support. And we went a few uh, and the Kogis who had to go, there were some, some of them, but the, the ones who had done the, the work couldn't go. So we, we had to go back just a year ago. That's the reason we went, we went back. And for this, we need a special payments, a special spiritual payments. And those, those payments are, just for your knowledge, uh, they are very special. I cannot talk about what is implicit in those, in those payments, but they, uh, the elders take months and months and months to prepare those. So they were already prepared, prepared ever since, uh, they were working on this ever since 2013. So finally we went last year, we had some uh, support from people here and there and uh, Form 21 and the Center for Secret Studies helped us with some tickets and so on and so forth. And then this year we went uh, to, to visit Mount uh, Etna around with uh, Kenki Tatani to see how uh, where we have to go. So we had this consultation, but we had to go uh, to visit the places first. So we found them. What we didn't find is people that they have forgotten to do rituals to the volcano. And that volcano, the Mount Etna volcano, is very powerful and it's meaningful, not just for Italy, but it's meaningful for the world for this healing and balancing in order to help the problem in Fukushima. Because these deities, these uh, beings, these uh, entities, they, are, they were waiting for us. They are waiting for us. So we knew when the problem uh, arose in, in uh, Mount Fuji, two beings from the Mount Fuji came out and helped, but they were exhausted. Nobody was feeding them uh, spiritually. So we knew, we knew, and we had to go. And ever since we have been over there, the problem is becoming, because there was no technology, there was nothing that could um, help somehow. And we know that it's not the, in the material world that we can deal with those um, things that, that is not possible at this time. Uh, technology is not the solution. So we had, we had to go and pay respect to those deities. And, and yes, we did. And now, before, in 2014, we were around uh, Mesa Verde, around Durango, Colorado. We were there because we were invited, but was, that was not the place to, to make the payments and offering. So we had to, to wait until we had enough, enough support. Finally, we went just recently. We went recently to Mount Blanca and uh, to the Zapata Falls. It's very, very sacred. And then we went to the Sand Dunes. So that's the, the, that's the second trip that we are doing. And we went to deliver the payments and the offerings as well. But 
why the Kogi and the Otomi are doing this? Because we, we are the ones who are receiving the instructions. We are the ones who are receiving the, the, in, the let's say, we are the ones who are doing the, the work. It doesn't mean we are the only ones who are going to do the, this work. For the, for the Fuji, we had to find somebody, a personalist, that could continue doing the rituals at, at least four times a year, every change of uh, season. We found, we found a beautiful woman who is now in charge of taking care about those rituals. Here, in, uh, in the Four Corners area, there was no problem because we were there with, uh, with our, our brother from the Dene peoples, the Navajo, a beautiful man who, who in dreams received and he's recovering hundreds and hundreds of different um, songs, ritual songs that had been lost before. He's receiving in dreams these songs for several purposes, but mainly for healing people and for healing Mother Earth. My brother Anderson Husky, he is taking care of these rituals ever since before. We are so happy, we are so glad that this is happening. Now for the Mount Etna, we are in trouble because people there because of invasion of the, ever since the, the Greek, they were invaded and the Romans and, and so on and so forth. All those people lost their ancestral teachings. They lost their rituals, the very ancestral rituals. We went to a museum and we found just remains of the, uh, the indigenous peoples there. They were. For what? It's very painful because it's like we have gone away so 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 far. But now we met some some beautiful people in uh, when we were in uh, in Creston, Colorado. There is a there is. A group of people like your like Sunrise, there is a group of people in, in Italy that they have come together and they are beginning to understand that that we have to go back to the original instructions. I don't remember exact the exact name of those those uh, that community, the Mantur community or something like that, but we met two women that they are willing to help us. And we are going to visit them. We are going to go when we are going to, 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 to go and have this, uh, because it's, it's this coming year that we are going to do this work around April, May. And they are going to be invited. And uh, they are going to be delivered the responsibility to take care of the Mount Etna, not just the Mount Etna, but all the beautiful places around and the sacred places, because they are so powerful, energetical, powerful places that uh, we, really, we, we really need those, uh, those, I, I'm just checking that it's about time. And they, there might be some um, some uh, uh, um, comments and so on and so forth. But you know, uh, I'm just in the second in the in the second one, and I haven't finished the second one. So <laughs> I speak I speak very very slow, 
but I want to make sure that you understand the importance of the work we are doing. Uh, Mindahi, this is Noel. Yes. And um, I just believe that what you're saying is just so important and so historic and so needed that you just take as much time as you need. And if folks need to get off, it's being recorded. They can pick it up later and we bless them. But I know that what you're delivering to us is just so important and that we have a divine appointment now. So just take your time. Yes. You're doing a beautiful job, and I've just taken a lot of notes. So, okay, so, so let, let me tell you that I also have to, uh, I, I was committed uh, to be with my children. Ah. So I told them that, oh, yes, I'm going to, uh, to close uh, the, the conversation at 10 p.m. my time. So this, okay. this is 8 to 10. So maybe... <laughs> Right. We have another session uh, in January because from Sounds now, good. now and uh, I'm going to go to Australia, I'm going to go to Poland, and I'm going to go to upstate New York. I have mm -hmm. many, many activities, but in January could be nice. Wonderful. Well, you know, um, I think, are we at the closing time now? We're close to it. Five up. Okay. Well, or eight up. Well, we appreciate this important message you've given to us. And, you know, there's probably a lot here that we can do um, some research. And, um, you know, I, I just think that uh, what maybe we could close with is letting us know how we can support you um, and um, how to be able to be in contact. And Bob has something he'd like to say. Yeah, I, uh, that, that'd be a good, great way to close for now so we can continue. Thank you for that invitation to do so. And I just think there, I know there are a number of people within our community, within the co-creators community, that are immensely supportive of this mission and purpose. There are some that are already doing uh, sacred ceremony, energetic healing work on the planet. There are a number of folks that are a part of our community that are very engaged in water blessing and water healing in places all around the world. And so I really look forward to this being a continued conversation so that we can connect resources, uh, as Noel said, in support of the indigenous um, view and perspective of this healing work. Right. That would be fantastic. Yeah, so I'm going to put a little bookmark at Pillar 2. Because <laughs> we need, yes. we have three, three or four yet to come. Yeah. But uh, if you just like to to close us out with uh, what your final words would be, because I do not want to. I know how busy you are. I don't want to hold you from your family. So thank you, Mendahi. Thank you. Yes, your support is very valuable, and I really thank again to your community because that night was very meaningful for us and. And during the journey, we met Anna, and, uh, and I know that we are going to work together to deliver this message in, in, in the most uh, extended way or in the most, uh, let's say, philosophical and ontological way. But as we say in Mexico, in, in Otomi peoples, kamadi, kwada, kamadi ku. Thank you, and the love be among us, brother, sister, and we need your help to do this work. And the, the, the work begins with a prayer, and the work also is material, and the help is material, and I really enjoy this conversation because I've been in, in your place, and it seems that we are ready to work together and pull together. Come at it. Yes. <laughs> Thank yes. you. Thank you. We'll be, enjoy we'll be joined by our feline friend here as well, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you, Mindahi. Love to your family. Love to you. Yes. Safe travel. Yes. Bye. Everyone. Bye, Kathy. Bye, Shaila. Bye, Bye Nicole. Anna. Anna. Bye, Anna. Bye, Bye. 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 Bye.
to you. Thank you. Okay. All righty, Sheila. Yes. <laughs> okay. And Nicole, All right. And Nicole, the call by, by, by Noel.